What is my name? Vladimir. What did you call it at first? Mikhail. Why? I just can't remember. Do you remember the last name? I already remember it. I learned from the guys. It's clear. Under what circumstances was my name heard? The guy recorded a voice message uh, thanking you for your support. Maybe he was recording a video for Dmitry Vladimir Exchange phone. Yes, yes, recorded a video. What does a voice message have to do with it? I got it wrong. I mean that I filmed it on video. Still video. Yes, yes, yes. We motivate our soldiers to take you prisoner. Do you think that at the front in the territory of active hostilities, it makes a big difference to kill the enemy or take him prisoner? I don't even know. Well, how to see. This is not a difference, but a choice. They are faced with a choice. They can kill or they can take prisoners. Under what circumstances might this happen? I don't even know. I just crawl it and surrender it. I understand. Can you imagine... Did you participate in assault operations? No. I... Spent six days in the water on your territory. In the water on our territory? Yes. Wait, uh, you'll tell me now. Imagine a situation. Our soldiers came up to yours. Ask, are you there? And you start... Shooting. What should they do? It makes sense to throw a grenade there, right? Yes, sure. Yeah. But our people can sit on the sidelines without threatening their lives and then offer to surrender. Because the Russians won't survive anyway. And some of your people then lower their weapons and surrender. Or you could just throw a grenade there and that's it. I am giving an example of a banal situation just to make it clear. I understand. Our hands and feet were frostbitten in the dugout. We could not do anything. When I go out, I crawl it on my elbows, because everything was still frostbitten. I'm trying to explain why we motivate our military personnel to take you prisoner. We send them donations, we send drones for this, they persuade you to surrender, then take you out of your positions. This is not about your situation, but it's hard work. It's hard yes. work, capture and take the prisoners out of there. It would have been much easier to throw a grenade into the dugout. Why is this all being done? Why do we need prisoners? Why are we so worried about them? Save your guys. Is it true? How? You take us to exchange for your guys. Right. Do you voluntarily consent to the recording and publication of this interview? Yes. Why do you give voluntary consent to the recording and publication of this interview? So that my fellow citizens don't be stupid and... ...don't think about... ...going to war. I've become a little wiser. That is why do you want to tell your story? Well, it's just... Uh, firstly, we were sent to the wrong place, and... ...secondly... We just lay there for six days and froze everything. Wait, are you given voluntarily consent in order to openly talk about everything that happened to you and warn others? Yes, our guys. Understood, understood. Good go. Tell me, are you mobilized? No, I signed the contract. Contract? Did he also sign the contract voluntarily? I was drunk then. <laughs> That is how does this even happen. First you sit down and have a drink, and then you go sign the contract. Well, probably something like this. Tell me exactly how this happened. How? On what day? On November 7th, I came to the military registration and enlistment office and asked for a contract. November 7th morning? In the morning. How come you were drunk in the morning? I slept a little, got up and drunk. So, did you drink it last night? I've been drinking since evening, and uh, 
I was drunk at night, slept yeah. for two, three you hours. You drunk in the evening, you drunk at night, you slept for two hours? Well, about two, three hours, I don't know. I didn't look at the time. I woke up, it was light. When you woke up, did you decide to have another drink? Well, naturally. I also drank at the military registration and enlistment office. Did they the office. military registration and enlistment office? No, I brought it with me. Vodka? Yes. In your pocket? Yes. Why are you laughing? I'm not laughing. Funny. This is Russia. Remember what Zhirinovsky said. The kingdom of heaven be upon him. Well, there's no point. However, we are not theologians. Why? What could prompt a drinking person to suddenly go to the military registration and enlistment uh, office? Well, first of all, I am sort of on trial. So what? Secondly, I had a suspended sentence, but they decided to change the punishment. I had two years of suspended imprisonment, but they decided that they would send me to prison. This is where the story takes on a slightly different meaning. That is, you were condemned. Yes, they gave me a suspended sentence. Probation, two years. Yes, I also had supervision. And? What did you want to replace with it? Probation. Yes. I had a way out. I had yes. to report to the station. I also had supervision in addition to the suspended well, sentence. Well, I understand, but they could come to you at any moment, yes. right? Like and? this. Uh, namely, they treated it to replace my suspended sentence with uh, imprisonment. How did they treat you? Well, there were two reports against me, uh, two or three. And after the third report, they take the case to court. And they are making a petition to change my the sentence. The supervision drawn up to rappers already? Yes. For what? I wasn't at home. Just weren't at home? Yes, I wasn't at home. Crime? That's what they say. What time did you not have? The fact is that we have an intercom there. So? Several people leave, two, three people. And there is a possibility that uh, they simply do not hear. I always had my phones inside, but no one called me. And just wrote a report. Yes, they wrote a report saying that I was not at home on a In certain In short, date. within the framework of supervision, a report can be written wherever and on anything. Yes. Do they decide yes. for themselves? Vodka, denunciations, surveillance. That's at the end of... 10 minutes of our interview, what I can say about Russia without knowing anything about it. What does this have to do with denunciations? Yes, about the denunciations I inferred from my previous knowledge. What are denunciations? Everyone writes denunciations against each other. Teacher reports on students, students on teachers, teachers report on students' parents, and they in turn report on teachers. In general, everyone reports on each other cyclically. Someone jokingly made a program called Snitch on Your Neighbor. Just for a laugh. But then so many messages came in that the person who made the program was shocked. I don't remember exactly how that the story ended. But you may not agree with me, we are having a dialogue. And, uh, when you came to the enlistment office drunk, were you not reprimanded? They did. Yes, did they tell you to leave? I just told them that I had drunk yesterday. Yeah, okay, what's next? I started signing papers. The instructor came up to me and asked me to wait. Was there an instructor there? Yes. I don't know his position, he helped with the papers. Curator? I don't know. Me neither. So did you sign the documents and go home? Yes, they said it would call in two days. Did they say they would call? Yes. Yeah, fine. They called. What's next? They called me and I came. With a backpack, as accepted. Tickets were given. Yes, with a backpack. They gave me tickets and around 10 o'clock I got on the train.
That is, they give you tickets and you have to go somewhere yourself. Yes, three of us went. It was Donetsk train. We landed in Novocherkask. And moved farther on. Did you drink along the way? I did. What about the rest? No. You got the bottle and no one drunk? I didn't offer it to them. Could, uh... They were non-drinkers. I would suggest Did but... you drink straight from the bottle or something? Why, I had a glass. The glass was. Intelligentsia. What happened when you arrived in Novocherkask? We got into a taxi and went to the checkpoint. I'm sitting here and thinking, maybe I should go get you some vodka. What for? To make it easier to talk. No need, I'm just a little tensed, yes. This would be a great experiment indeed. A prisoner would come in and I would pour him a drink for under the table. I would just pour a glass and the stories would start flying, the soul would sing. Okay, tell the story further. In general, where exactly did you come to Ukraine? But the fact is that I can't remember the name of this village. They asked me about this when they took me prisoner. And then they asked me, but I absolutely can't remember. I don't even know the name. Fine. The village is That's vomit it. No, all over. I'll find out. Where did you end up from Novocherkask? Where they teach. To Aliki. Rostov? In my opinion, to Rostov, yes. Fine. And then? How were you transported? By bus or train? No, by car, by truck. How long did you travel? A lot, probably eight hours. Eight hours. You arrived, have you been dropped off? Dropped off. Where? I... I think... Uh... In Trochizbinka. Trochizbinka, fine. We're already closer to the point. Did you drink along the way? No, I didn't sleep. I started having problems with my head. There was delirium tremens. Delirium tremens? Well, yes, because I drank for four months. In short, have you run out of alcohol? That's not a point. I simply had nowhere to take it. Ah. I ran out and had nowhere to get it. These are not mutually exclusive things. That's why I started having problems sleeping. And I didn't sleep for about five days. What did your partner say? Uh, is this a cohabitant, a common law wife? She scolded. it. Scandal started because I drank. How can one not make scandals if you've been drinking for four months? I have temporary job. Temporary work? Brought money. I would uh, have been kicked out in a week for this. <laughs> in any normal family, no one would tolerate this. What are you doing? Drinking for four months? You see how good I was. Good? Maybe, maybe. Let's talk about it. You arrived in Trehizbinka. What next? What's going on there? We were there for four days and went to positions. I mean, not in a position, but where you can rest. We also stayed there for four days, then we were sent. They sent us to position as additional assistance. Sent to the 5th company, and I would be in the 6th yeah. company. What is the name of the regiment? Or what was it? What kind 88 of formation? 88 regiment. 88? Yes. Red banner, tank or rifle? No, rifleman. We arrived there, they dropped us off, and we went. What month was this? November, uh, I think. It was the 38th, 2023. November 30? Yes. Was it already quite cold? Mm, yes. Were you dressed warmly? Not actually... In uniform? The uniform similar to this and the jacket. And a jacket? Well, here it is. Uh, Some kind of thermal clothing, good shoes. There were ankle boots. These boots? No. 
other. These are some nice boots. Where did you get it? They let me change clothes. Who gave you? In Kiev, in my opinion. Well, okay. What were your positions? Dugouts, trenches, what was it? Dugout. I'm telling you that we arrived. There was uh, some kind of long platform there. We crossed it. We, or rather my partner, was explained uh, uh, where to go. I followed him. We were walking for maybe 30 minutes. They explained to him that he needed to cross Reed Field. We climbed the hill and went to the aid of uh, the 5th Regiment. I asked him if we were going right. He replied that it was Is correct. Is it still hard for you to talk about this? No, I am just like myself. Yes, continue. We arrived. The drone started shooting. Yeah. We stayed down near one tree. I grove three in the middle. They hid. Nearby there was something similar to a forest. Not quite a forest, but... Uh, I went there. I came across a dugout. I checked whether there was anyone there or not. There was no one there. I came back and said that I had found an empty dugout. We took our backpacks and went there. We settled down there. The sleeping bags were laid out. We decided to stay there until the morning. When the morning came, it turned out that my partner had left the water at the previous position. When we woke up, there was no water. It was there. He went to get water. When he was returning back, they started shooting at him. From machine guns? With machine guns, and they threw a grenade as well. Was there anyone? At first, we didn't know that they were, were Ukrainians. Were this already ours, and then you found out that they were Ukrainians. It's clear. What's next? He, in general, quickly flew into the dugout. It was nearby. They shot from the left side. There was a dugout here, and they were on the left. It was... It was something like this. About six meters distance, I think so. He jumped into the dugout. He was wounded in the shoulders. I asked if they were our soldiers or not, because they spoke Russian. I suggested that he shout to those soldiers. He was shouting hours, hours, but they continued to shoot. I saw that because of the shooting, they couldn't hear it. During the day, he tried to look out one more time. He looked. It seemed to me that the Russians were talking. Don't get off the dugout. I called out to them several times. We slept right next to the entrance to the dugout. Then later on, we didn't even leave there. We even went to the toilet there. They started shooting at us again and threw one or two grenades. That's all. And on the sixth day of our stay there, our legs gave out. Oh, so you were there for six days? They yes. threw grenades at you, shot at you, and yes. you sat there for six days? Yes. I don't even know by what miracle the grenades didn't fly into our dugout. They fell right near the entrance. And you were surrounded there for six days? Yes, we were surrounded by you. And they shouted at you to come out or surrender? No. On the sixth day in the evening, I suggested to my partner that we try to get to our troops. So I suggested this to him. He replied that he would not be able to get there and asked that if I reached our troops, they would send help. Where are you going to go if you know that grenades are being thrown at you? And they were shooting. We... we... how to say... Firstly, we sat there for six days, and secondly, I simply no longer understood what was happening around me. Or maybe no one has shot at you in the last 24 hours. 
Not because of this. We simply no longer had any food, no water. There was only a can of canned food left there. I mean, all. did they throw grenades at you several times and then left? Or did they, they throw them for all us. those days? They were in their positions. Even drones so were So maybe they were dropping drones all the time? I no longer understood. It's clear. Clear. Next. I crawled out of the dugout and realized that my legs were also giving out, frostbitten feet. And your partner said he couldn't, right? Could you no longer move? It was cold, right? Cold. Do you want to eat? I wanted at best to be saved. Did you want to drink? Yes. I, I just already wanted... started having small uh, hallucinations. At that moment we were already completely exhausted. We were seized by panic. I just want those future soldiers, those who are going to become soldiers, to feel the horror of being in a cold dugout for six days. No food, no water. I mean, it's complete nightmare. At times I even wanted to cry, even now I want to cry. You convened this horror as best you could. We can describe the sensations more colorfully. I don't know how to do this. I really was panicking. Don't be shy about your emotions. Any emotions are normal. When you see right in front of you a picture of this grenade exploding, which looks like an orange, it's scary. It hurts your eyes, your head is cracking. Only that an orange is tasty, but a grenade is not. My ears are still ringing. These emotions cannot be expressed. How close to you did these grenades explode? At the same distance that the monitor is located. Is it about one and a half meters? This is how we lay. A grenade explodes in front of you? Why weren't you hit by shrapnel? No, no, I only felt something inside the helmet when I turned it away. I was also wearing a bulletproof vest. Huh. Then I felt pain. I turned to my partner and asked if there are any injuries. Uh, he said no. I don't know, maybe it's all because of emotions. I was very scary. It was impossible to get out or act in any way. Why did you abandon your troops there? I have no idea. We lay there for six days. But they knew? They found out where they we had it. gone. It turned out that before we arrived at this position, your soldiers captured it the day before. What happened after you got out? Did you feel like your legs were losing weight? I started to crawl. I didn't really feel it. I just fell. Yes, I felt it and fell because I Did couldn't Did you walk. get on your feet anyway? I got up. I got coaching the benches and fell. The branches cracked and machine gun fire began again in on the left side. From this side and uh, they shot in the direction in front of me and to the left of me. Air fighter then took me in front. Hmm. I hide behind this small tree. Well, how did you hide? Just press come to him. Hmm? All sounds died down. Bullet and one grenade. During the lull I crawled toward the rod. I was walking on my elbows. Crawled out onto the rod and as it turned out, your soldiers were positioned near this, near this rod. Did you go to meet them? No, I crawled to the road we have already walked along it. Got up. It turns out there was such a small hill. What is it called? Uh, near the road, it looks like a cliff. The cliff. It was difficult to get to the road. There was a ditch there. I got up to cross and there was either a dark up area or such a lumpy area from explosions. I got up but my legs didn't move, I caught on something and fell. I turned around and saw that fire was visible from behind the muzzle of the weapon and 
shooting began. They threw grenades again, and that's it. They ordered me to stand to undress. Well, I won't run away from them on my elbows. That's basically it. They, they undressed me and took my documents. More soldiers were called. Then they saw that you were already weak. Of course, now that I've crawled out of the dugout. They decided not to kill. Apparently, yes. Maybe others have convened that it is not necessary. Did they take your partner? I asked about this when they came for me. I say that I had a partner there. They say they would take him. Did you reach our position yourself or were they brought you there? Brought. They brought. It's all about the same thing. We have to mess with you. Have you seen the Nadis? No. So they say on TV that you are fighting the Nazis. But I didn't see them. What about NATO? Um, only Ukrainians. Only Ukrainians? It turns out that you are at war well, with the Ukrainians. Well, I don't know. I saw Ukrainians, but I didn't see the rest. What do you think I am? Human. I understand. Ukrainian? Don't know. For your information, yes. <laughs> You're at war with the Ukrainians. I'm telling you if you haven't understood this yet. Apparently... Apparently I didn't understand. I didn't get it at all. i telling you I drove here in such a state that I didn't realize anything. You have arrived in a foreign country where no one is waiting for you. You could easily have been killed here. And you would turn into homeless on the field. That's all. And you came here and didn't even know where you were going or why. I guess you still don't. You don't understand who's here in the camp around you. Who are those people? NATO employees? Nazis? Who are they? No. But these are Ukrainians. Well, yes. You are in another state. At least she doesn't drink. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Thank you. Everything is fine. How are you? Everything is fine too. Will you talk to your fiance? Certainly, if I may. Where is he? Well, he's your prisoner. In captivity. How do you know? Well. I know. Where? You called me before. I didn't call. So it was your friend? Maybe the soldiers called. I don't know. Oh, well. Yes? Did they call? I don't know, but someone called me. We are recording this conversation and we'll publish it later. I am handing over the phone. Fine. Hello, dear. Hello. That's enough. Wipe away the tears. Well, how are you doing Don't there? pretend to be a tough man. <sighs> how am I? You may cry. He's Captured. That's good about this. What's the news from the military? No news, Evgeny. None. What do you want to hear from me? This is what mom does. Sasha is doing this. To hear I just need to get it through the prosecutor's office or in some other way to be included in the exchange lists. Included? Already included? The company commander said that you have already been included in the list for exchange. Whoa. He doesn't really get in touch with us, but they say that you are on the list of exchange. I'm in a prison for prisoners of war. I don't know when this video will come out. Here, uh, how are you doing? How is the kid? It depends on them when the prisoners of war will be transferred. If they call, insist, bother them, then they will take you faster. And if they don't, then you can sit here for a year or two years. Do you hear? There are such cases. Is there still money left? It's okay. There's some... Where? From salary? Did you receive your salary? Ask if salaries are coming. Is my salary coming? Yes. Can you imagine? 
There are no salaries, only your fighting money has arrived, and so you were deducted from the payment. And then they wanted to declare you dead, because initially we were told that you died. How can I be dead? Mikhail spoke with the, with the one who called us first, and he told us to come to Ukraine and take the corpse before it rots. Well, this... you see me, right? I see, of course, I see. Okay, don't cry. How is my friend doing? He misses you very much. He had put vodka, red and wine, wine, and constantly asked about you. Cried a lot here. Did he put vodka? Yes, yes. He misses you very he much. He jokes like that. He's 13 years old. He jokes like that sometimes. He teases me because I was drinking. Did he put vodka on the table? Yes, something like that. And red and white wine? He bought it at this red and white store. There is such a store. Red and white store. You'll come and drink straight from the bottle. God bless. But you won't be there anytime soon. Evgeny, your relatives are asking me about this money. They all just already... just tired me already. They constantly ask for this money back. They demand it and everything like that. They've already harassed me about this money. Let me tell you something. I'll return the phone to you. I'll return it. What's going on there? Problems, right? No, everything is fine. Everything is fine. I just can't understand something. The situation is this. You don't know whether he is dead or alive, right? Yes. And relatives have the same information. Yes, relatives have the same thing. And in short, is there a fight for a bank card? Yes. For a card of a person who is neither dead nor alive? Yes. More likely dead than alive? The relatives demand that I return everything. I told them that I would not return anything to anyone. Don't return anything. Don't return anything. Don't return anything. You're the only ones here who waited and believed. Yes. Yes? How did you tolerate him when he drank for four months? Not four months. This is minimum number. He drank for nine months. Nine months? I endured it. I endured it. No big deal. Like this? A real Russian woman? Yes. Yes. <coughs> what right do they have to demand your bank card? But due to the fact that I'm not his legal wife, uh, he did not have time to formalize the relationship. And since he has real relatives, his mother, they demand that I give all the money. Is there a lot of money there? I don't understand what the fight is for. There is not enough money at all. How much is this? This is 100,000. Well, 100,000 is uh, yes. Can you, can you drink with 100,000 a month? Don't know, I don't drink. No? No. Does his mother drink? Mom doesn't drink cases. And mom doesn't drink. Why does she need 100,000? Why does she need they that kind of money? It's unfair. Who exactly? Who else besides mom? He has a mother and a sister. Mom and sister? Yes. It turns out that there is a struggle for inheritance. Game of Thrones? Yes. Interesting story. This is Russia. Why did you send him to war? He went there himself. Didn't he ask you? He did, and then he decided that he would rather go to war than drink. Oh, so. And he told me the story that he went to war not to stop drinking, but because they wanted to put him in prison. Do you know anything about this? Well, it was, yes. How many reports were written against him? No, I don't remember. Got you. So you have been exposed. There were no reports. There were reports. Uh, he had a suspended sentence. It's so true. I understand. What if he died? What for a proposed would he die? Don't know. Well, he almost died. He lay for six days without water, without food, in the cold. And then our soldiers found him and took him prisoner. For what homeland? 
I don't know. For our fatherland. Is your Russia located in Ukraine? I don't know. I don't watch the news and I don't watch anything else either. Yeah, no. I want to tell you that this is your whole problem. Because if he died, he would simply die for nothing. That's all. His corpse would lie in the field and decompose. Just like the bodies of thousands of other Russian soldiers. And it would not be for his homeland that he would decompose here, but just like that. Well, yes. He would lie there and stink, that's it. Will you vote for Putin? No. No? Why? I don't go to the elections. Mm. That's why I won't go anywhere. Well, if you went to the elections, would you vote? I wouldn't go to vote for him. Wouldn't go. Well, thanks for that. For the elections. Am I incorrectly saying not to elections, but to Putin's elections? Will you go? Because there is only one candidate. Who cares? Evgeny, just don't swear at me. I gave your mother money because she needed it. She said she would return everything. I know you won't be happy with this, but I had no other options. She was in a hopeless situation. She said... It is this a hopeless situation. What do I care about her? Here a person tells you that no one cares about me except you. Why did you do this? I don't understand that at all. Evgeny, she will pay back everything. I know you're unhappy. She will pay it back. Save your kindness, your heart for another. Did she give your mom money? Mine. Oh, well, you see. I'm here for you, understand? Who did I come here for? Well, you know me. I have lived alone all my life without them. Actually, you just say why you came here. For sake of money, right? Did you came here for money, right? Well, look at me. Did you came here for money? No. So you just say that you came here for them. I'm here for you, you know. You didn't go for Russia. You came for money. You went to kill people for money. How does this make you feel? He didn't kill anyone. First of all, this is unknown. And secondly, if he didn't kill, it was only because the opportunity didn't arise. I know my husband. He will never kill anyone. The same thing. Are you crazy or what? He was here with a machine gun, not a water pistol. I know. And? So why did he walk here with the machine gun? What did he use as a support? Or did he exercise with it? He was in a foreign country with a machine gun. And with a machine gun, soldiers from a foreign country come to another country to kill. And he went for the sake of blood money, which you cannot share there now. He went to kill. Understand this? Am I saying something wrong? Yeah. Okay, baby, stop crying. Let's say goodbye. I can't bear it all later. Do they feed you well there? I'm not gonna say anything either. The food is fine. I understood you. But better than in trenches. Certainly. Better, right? That is, in captivity, you are fed better than at the front. Well, at least it was better when I was being treated. Well, at least, yes. Please, answer me. How long will he be in your captivity there? Let's not now. What are you talking about? Are you hard of hearing or with uh, perception? Your hearing seems to be fine because you can hear, but you have no perception. I told you that when your sight takes him, then we will give it back. Not the other way around. When Russia takes him, then we will give him back. If they want him now, we'll give him to them. If they want him tomorrow, any time. Bring our captured soldier instead and he will go home. All. Sit with him and have a drink and a snack. Divide one hundred thousand. Everything will be fine. 